But any case, uh, now it's time to move things over to Everfree Northwest for their convention in 2016 and to interview our wonderful guests there. So we're going to be hanging up on this call to go to the interview call. We'll be coming back to this one in about an hour. So I, well, hour if not sooner. So I hope you guys can join us in at that point. Well, mainly Suki. Everybody else is pretty much on the other call. Hey, oh. you, 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 you me. Well, we love oh. you, Suki. We love you, Suki. We honestly do. <laughs> All right. And so we're going to hang up here. Love you, Suki. Fuck you. Wow, interesting time to end that. <laughs> All right. And we're going to go ahead and move on to Everfree Northwest. Let's go ahead and get the call up and going here. I fucking love Suki. Oh my god. Uh, that <laughs> shit was too good. The me timing was unbelievable. Yeah. No, me and Cody were cracking up. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Alright, but we're getting the call here and we got Tails here. Or should we call you Pizza Hut? Hey Tails, uh, welcome to the Brony Show. And uh, we're trying to get Thornwing on right now and I don't think we got him just yet. Or maybe we are. Um, okay, uh, th apparently Thornwing is having some issues, but hello, ev everybody. Welcome, Tails, the, uh, I believe, the co-chair of Everfree Northwest. Uh, am I correct in that? Yeah, it's me. Okay, got one for two. Let's see if I get Thornwing right when it gets Circuit. on here. Circuit, do you have him on your friends list? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah, it, it is check. attempting to call him. It's just um, apparently Skype's giving calling issues, so... Hopefully, yes, and I believe now we are joined with Thornwing. Thornwing, do you hear us? I do. Hello. Hello, and Thornwing here is, uh, I believe, the head of um, guest relations. Am I correct in that one? You are correct. Two for two. I got it right. <laughs> uh, well, someone buy this man a cookie. I it's finally got it right. It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but yes, we are here for our annual interview with Everfree Northwest to talk about, um, well, I guess next year's convention since this year is just about over. But yes, we're here. We want to talk to you about Everfree Northwest 2016 and just everything that's going to be happening with that. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm jumping a little ahead of myself here and getting a little overexcited. So why don't we start off with... Uh, for those who have never heard of Everfree Northwest or just like to hear all about the great pony conventions out there, tell us a little bit about Everfree Northwest and why it's one of the biggest pony conventions out there. Uh, well, I mean, it's an awesome convention. Uh, we're, um, we definitely try to focus a lot um, on the target audience. Uh, last year, I think we had like over 400 kids. So we do like a ton of kids programming and we try to um, do a lot of uh, kid friendly events. I mean, all of our events are, are, are PG and family friendly, but we do events specifically tailored to kids. We have a whole kids room, uh, arts and crafts and like um, lots of stuff. Uh, I know that Everfree has donated more money to um, charity and our charity is the Seattle Children's Hospital. We've donated more money to charity than any uh, pony convention yet and uh, we try to do I mean we definitely try to tap into the community we definitely try to um, you know pull the community and, and be like who do you want to see you know and, and try to bring in people that uh, that, that the community wants um, and stuff mm, it definitely sounds exciting uh Let's see here. And uh, me and uh, Deal Grist here, who is going to be my um, co-chair for uh, this interview, uh, have a few questions set up. Um, let's go ahead and talk about you your, about you two in general. Um, uh, we'll start with you, Tails. Um, can you give us a, a brief overview of your job at Everfree Northwest? Uh, well, I'm the co-chair, so I, um, I worked with my co-chair. Uh, Bunny's the other chair. Uh, we work together to hire our director team, who manages all of our departments. Um, so we have a lot of people that, that we trust. Um, we basically just kind of oversee everything and kind of watch, make sure everybody's doing their jobs correctly. And um, we've hired really competent people, so we don't have to do uh, a whole lot of micromanaging. Uh, that's always the best part of a convention. <laughs> Let everybody else do the work. <laughs> I can right. attest from having people that work in higher-ups in other conventions that 
actually the higher like the higher up jobs aren't as relaxed you don't spend very much time in any one spot you're but you're basically running all over the place <laughs> yeah and we kind of do that right? we're, yeah we're all i mean we're always available for like questions um because we do have some new people uh new staff on this year so they have questions about like hey what you know what have we done in previous years or um you know i'm not sure about this decision and I, and I don't feel comfortable making it even though I'm a director. So, I mean, we're just always available for questions and feedback and helping out uh, wherever needed. Great. And uh, Thornwing, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your position in Everfree Northwest? Well, I am the senior director of guest relations for Everfree Northwest 2016. Uh, basically what that entails is all of the wonderful guests that you see gracing the con that bring us all the wonderful programming and do the autographs i'm in charge of bringing them to the convention getting them signed on as guests and making sure they're taken care of while they're at the convention so that it can be nice and fun for all the interaction they have with the attendees so you are um essentially equivalent to brony con's vip relations yes so the different cons have different names for the department uh, Everfree calls the department guest relations, which encompasses all of the guests for the convention itself. That's uh, VIPs, uh, also has to do with the community guests, uh, people from the community that we invite as, as special highlights of, of the different genres of uh, material they produce, um, musicians as well. So I have, I have ties to all that. Other conventions might call it uh, VIPR, VIP relations. I know BronyCon, BabsCon, they have that kind of moniker there. But all in all, it's basically we take care of the VIPs and the guests of the convention. Mm. Well, very nice. So I'm actually, if you don't mind me taking the, the reins for just a sec, um, right curious as to what's your structure for uh, guest relations there? Because I know the only con I've worked is BronyCon, so that's the only temple I have to go off of. But the jobs are very segmented. So how would, what would you say the scale and um, job types of guest relations are? Oh, it's a good thing you asked. I, I have worked for BronyCon as well in their VIP department. Um, so it is structured fairly similar. We're not as big as BronyCon, but we are the second largest convention out there. So we have a lot of the same needs, um, just on a, a little bit smaller scale. Um, so we have myself as the senior director. I have Drew Fain as my second in command as, as a director as well. Um, and then we have the different categories involving the guest relations department being the liaisons, taking care of the VIPs directly one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we have our green room staff that manages our, our various green rooms for the guests, whether that be the VIPs, the community guests, or the musicians. Mm -hmm. We also have autograph staff that take care of the autograph room. That's selling of the autograph vouchers, making sure people are, are get, getting through the lines correctly, that the guests are, are interacting with you correctly, uh, and that everybody gets what they need to done in the autograph room. Um, and also the transportation for the guests. Uh, so kind of four different departments within the one department there. And uh, how has your your department changed over the years? Because I know BronyCon, um, when I started there three years ago, it was very much a smaller department and structured very differently. So just just how is your how as a staffer has your department evolved? Well, I think in all a lot of these conventions that sprouted up uh, as pony conventions. Have kind of learned over time as they've grown. Uh, most of them started from meetup groups and, and people that got together and said, hey, we want to do a convention. Uh, not a ton of people have had a lot of experience running conventions of this mm -hmm. sort. So over time, uh, a lot of what's happened is we've grown as a department in figuring things out from the ground up, uh, from people that didn't know anything to now have a few years of experience behind us as, as to how this stuff works. Um, and also bringing in talent and people that have experience from cons going back many years. So learning from other cons, other things in the industry to help make our department stronger. One of the things that uh, we kind of focus on in our department and kind of as a convention as a whole is the guests. So, you know, without guests, it's not as big or as fun of a con, so to speak, right? So we got to have right. people for people to come and want to see. So uh, the focus being on those guests makes our department very, very important to the entire con as a whole. And then also making sure that we utilize those guests in all the different aspects of the con. So it's not just you come to see a guest on a panel, you get their autograph and you're done but you have other opportunities to interact with the guests and make that experience more of a, a well-rounded experience. 
It was awesome. Yeah, it's this seems to be kind of like how it's gone because I know in the past uh, you were lucky if VIPs had you know one or two people to associate with them to interact with the whole con. Um, I think, yeah, the head of the department currently um, actually worked for you guys last year and the year before, uh, Jeremy Stubbs or Infinite. In- Infinite Pony, yep. Yes, yep. he did. I so, was there with him and then got to drug along with uh, him to BronyCon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's kind of a small world out there in the PonyCon community. A lot of people work multiple conventions. It also helps to have that experience of running multiple conventions to help all the different ones out there succeed. So um, there's a lot of us that travel to multiple cons and help make every con success. And that's a great thing. It's a it's a good show of how we, we help each other in the community and really come together to make these things uh, special events for everyone, no matter where they're at. How, how is, for, kind of a question for both of you, but how is that little dynamic, that community of con staffers um, particularly for Pony, grown, or have you experienced it grow uh, since since we started doing cons? Because it seemed at the beginning it was kind of everyone had to do their own thing and uh, kind of like a, a home team is the best team mentality, but there's definitely, I, I seem to see, a lot of cross-pollination now. Well, I mean, there's, there's a lot to be said about the home-based people being able to run their own cons and, and, and be that local source of information and, and resource that you need to be there. Uh, mm-hmm. It's really hard to run a con remotely, right? Right. Uh, so you do rely a lot on your local staff. But that's not to say that you can't help out a con remote. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into putting a con together. Not all of it needs to be done on site, and a lot of it can be helped in participation with other people. Um, so we bring in whatever talent we can find and make sure we we have the best overall experience by bringing all that experience to bear. Um, another thing that just to mention, you know, especially with the pony cons on the guest side, when we started doing these cons back four or five years ago, when these things started popping up all over the place, the guests themselves had no clue. A lot of these uh, guests from Pony hadn't been to conventions before, and their agents weren't used to getting requests from pony cons in general. So they had to figure this out just as much as we had to as well. Mm -hmm. And it's a very strong uh, benefit that we've had in working with the agents and with the talent directly that have made these conventions so popular and so wonderful to, to, uh, to have happen because of the, the ability to work together and kind of grow together in this experience as we've ever come to make these pony cons what they are today. And, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, how about you, Tails? Uh, what, what is your uh, opinion on that? What was the, what was the question? Sorry, like, I was listening, but so yeah, I, heard, uh, I lost, I lost the train of where it started. Um, that particular question was, how have you seen the, the dynamic of cross pollination between con staffers change uh, since pony con, pony con started being a thing. Yeah, definitely. Like I'm start, uh, you know, I'm visiting, um, I mean, there were 40 pony conventions last year. So, um, and some of them happen like really close together, uh, like location wise. Um, mm-hmm. and there's definitely some staff that I've worked with at, at cons, um, that are now, you know, coming back to Everfree. And so there is a lot of uh, cross staff, and it's really great to work with people over and over because um, then you know what their what their skills are, what they're good at, you know, and 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 um, watching their performance at another con can can kind of tell you, you know, if they're if they're good at a job or, or bad at a job, and if they'd be better, you know, somewhere else. Um, and I think that uh, you know when pony cons first started, that a lot of con chairs kind of like thought they were just going it alone and they just kind of like did their own thing and it was kind of competitive and uh you know and we've seen some cons like kind of die out and some more pop up and and i think con chairs are kind of starting conventions are starting to work you know together more and, and and you know share their staff and share their resources and and different things and Mm -hmm. uh, become more community-oriented, like, convention-wise. 
Um, I mean, because all pony conventions are generally about the community, but, uh, you know, I think they, they kind of used to seclude themselves, and now it's everyone's kind of like, wait a minute, this is dumb. We all like the same thing. Right. And it's you all share the same audience, more or less. Um, right. Geography, so it's better to work together. Mm -hmm. We're, we're um, kind of lucky in the sense that we have so many guests to pick from and, and putting together a convention nowadays. You know, imagine if we only had six total guests in the show to choose from. How 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 many cons could we actually hold with the same six guests attending every convention? Right. Mm -hmm. It would be so. We do have a, a, a luxury in having a large guest list to have to choose from, and and to formulate the different conventions so that we're not all the same thing every every weekend throughout the year. Um, so that's kind of helped in getting a lot of cons out there. And and like Tail said, you know, it used to be that the sense of competition was there that everybody was trying to one up with each other, or you know, we're better than you, or we're we're doing our own thing, we're going to work on our own way. And I think a lot of that recently just has changed or just come about that we do better when we work together. We share the same kind of staff. We share the same kind of guest pools. You know, it's it's to our advantage to work in participation with other cons and, and make every con a good con so that there's not, you know, just one winner in the end, basically. Winner take all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I believe the three main cons on that coast, if you include Canada, are Bernie Can, Everfree Northwest, and, uh, not in any particular order, but Bernie Can, Everfree Northwest, and, um, Babs. Oh, right, right into my con, Babs, uh, EQLA as well, is that right? EQLA, yeah, there's, there's four main cons on the East Coast, so four it's cons. Bernie Can, Everfree, Babs Con, and EQLA, yes. So maybe a question for, for both of you, but what would you say differentiates your con from the other cons on the coast? If anything, maybe they're all just ran really well, but do you do you have a mission that makes your con different than the other ones? You know, I think Everfree's been distinguished in the community for quite a while now, this being our fifth year. Um, Babs is a little bit newer, but still established well as a con. Bernie Can, EQLA, they've been around for a while as well. Um, each con kind of has their pros and cons, pardon the pun. Uh, <laughs> You know, BabsCon has a lot of party atmosphere. It's very, um, you know, community oriented in the in the sense of you come to party, you come to have a good time. Uh, EQLA is very uh, laid back. It's it's more geared towards the Gen One crowd or just all generations of pony, not just the the Brony community of Gen Four. Um, Brony Can has a has a target audience that revolves around a lot of the local guests. Uh, people that you don't necessarily see at long distance cons or you know we can't afford to always bring out to these long distance cons some of the more back end show staff that you don't always get a chance to see out in the open um everfree's kind of found its niche with uh catering more towards the well-rounded approach the family approach the kids especially as tails pointed out earlier um the writing track is very strong um and just Basically giving you the full all-around experience, making sure we have a good guest list, that we have involvement from all those guests on all fronts, and that we have good elements of everything. You know, we have the party, we have the music, we have the, the wonderful vendor hall, uh, we have the great events. You know, we've got a little bit of everything, but I would say probably the focus being on the family aspect, the kids, uh, strong kids track, and especially the writing uh, we've had a, a very well-known writing track and had good uh, writing competition each year. Um, so to put us on the map, I guess that would probably be my answer there. Okay, and how about you, Tails? Uh, do you have any particular insight on that? I know you, with it being the co-chair, it's you get a bit more of the overall oversight for the con. Jeez, I think Thornwing like pretty much covered everything. Um, mm -hmm. And I've never actually, I don't, I've never been to EQLA, so I. I don't know a lot about them, but I think Thornwing has, so um, he would be a better authority on that. But yeah, uh, definitely our our kids track, um, all of our kids programming, and uh, yeah, writing. Um, would we? I've been told, you know, heard numerous times that uh, you know if you're a writer, Everfree Northwest is the writing con. Like that's it. So, um, and. And that's definitely a really community-oriented event. Um, we do do the the writing contest every year, and we do a lot of um, 
author panels. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. We did the iron author competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes we have like, uh, usually we have a, a writer's lounge where uh, like after panels are over, writers can just come in, talk about their fan fictions, hang out, you know, bring your laptop and write or paper or whatever. And just, you know, brainstorm ideas with, with other authors and just hang out, you know, like if pony, mm -hmm. if the pony stock concerts aren't your thing, like, go to the writer's lounge still open, you know, no, no panels happening officially, but you know, do your writing thing with other authors. So it's kind of like a brain trust of sorts. Everyone mm -hmm. just gets to come in and what do they call it? A pressure cooker. Yeah. That was it. I think in world war two, they would take all the big scientists and say, all right, you got this problem to solve. Go. Hey, I'm chasing yeah, and, rabbits. <laughs> and Brony con Brony, Brony can, Definitely, um, they do. They they had a huge um, guest list this year, and it's a lot of the the show staff because they mm -hmm. just have to drive down for the day, you know, hang out, do their events, and then go home. And so it's it's super easy um, for a lot of the show staff to come and hang out with a portion of the community. Because um, mm -hmm. I mean, Seattle's kind of close, but that's like four or five hours. Whereas Brony Can is like, you know, right by the the studio and everything. They have so, to deal with the pesky paperwork that comes with it too. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's really cool that, that they can incorporate a lot of the show staff into their into their uh, their convention that mm -hmm. don't um, get to go to a lot of cons. Like you know the the just like the, the character designers, storyboard artists, people that like a lot of cons are just kind of like yeah, and they just kind of like brush over you know that part of the creators. Um, and and Bernie can can easily bring them down. Mm -hmm. I think what a lot of people don't understand or might not understand about community get or just guests at a convention like this is this is work to them. I mean, they're not just there to hang out and have fun like a regular attendee would be. Mm -hmm. They're there to work. I mean, they're professionals. This is what they do for a living. Um, you know, we pay them to come and, and participate in our events and we take care of them in doing that. So, as much as we'd love to just invite everybody on the show staff and have a big old party, it's it's very difficult when you know we have to keep in mind the costs involved with bringing guests to a convention and making sure that we have a, a guest list that people are going to want to see. Right, because the in terms of cost, there's I mean, currently their mama, as I understand it, there's you have either they have an appearance fee or they get a certain cut from autographs or something like that. And in return, every, every they go to different. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah. They're, everyone's they're yeah. Every contract is different, and there's different rates and certain certain number of events they have to go to, or sessions, or things like that. So they're they're always almost always busy. There's there's some downtime, but that's why it's kind of like I know as a gushing first time con goer a few years back, I was like, oh boy, there's going to be so much time to be had with the VIPs. And you'll get to know them, and like you. You do a bit if they if they choose to open up, but a lot of it's a lot of it's business. But they're, I think it's safe to say, um, it's always a great experience to work with them. And, and to the guest credit, I mean, they are so good at this and, mm -hmm. and just personable and fun to work with that it almost doesn't feel like a job. It really it doesn't, doesn't. Feel like business in a lot of times. But they are there to work for us. They're there to have fun. And make the convention a success to make the guests happy. You know, they do a great job at it, and we love them for for their energy that they bring and and for their willingness to help us out. Um, you know, a lot of these professionals they could be charging thousands and thousands of dollars to come to these cons, and that's what they normally would do. But for a lot of pony cons, they cut us deals. They they make it um, an easier. Uh, arrangement for us to be able to afford a lot of these guests in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to really, you know, tip our hats to them as a favor that they give us, you know, spending their time, they give up their weekends. We, we, you know, ring, ring, uh, run them through the ringer a lot of times running in for panels to panels, to autographs, to back and mm -hmm. forth. And, and they do a lot of work and I, I just have to, you know, give them props for their, for their wonderful, ethic in, in working the con and in bringing all that energy that they do and making things as, as awesome as they are. Mm -hmm. Well said. Very well said. I, I do have a couple more questions, but I feel like I've been hogging the airtime. Um, do any of the other uh, the circuit or any other co-hosts want to ask any questions? 
actually, I'm not sure that this was brought up yet, but um, for those uh, those interested in contributing to Everfree Northwest, is there any special um, contest going on right now, or anything uh, that they might be interested in knowing about? Yeah, definitely. Um, I know our PMV contest is live right now, so we are currently accepting submissions for that. Um, our vendor hall application is just opened as well, so if you want to be a vendor, fill out that application. Um, We're looking for all the great unique stuff to fill up the vendor hall. You know, it's it's <laughs> great to have people come that bring the same old stuff every time, and we'd love to see them there. We'd love to see some new fun stuff as well. So if you got some interesting items, be sure to to get it up there and let us know what you got. Yeah. Uh, this is a very interesting topic. Do you guys have any resources? Um, I mean, I specifically don't have anything I can do with it if you had it on hand. But do you have any resources for people who are looking to go and be a vendor at conventions for the first time? Because when you look at when you look at the supply chain that's involved and the cost of a table and stuff like that, it can be pretty pretty daunting. But you know, it's it's tough to break into the business, and and people don't realize that being a vendor is a business. It is mm -hmm. not necessarily you just go put up a lemonade stand and, and sit there for the weekend and people just buy your stuff. This is a business, and, and a lot of people, mm -hmm. this is their whole business. This is what they do for a living. Um, so you got to take that into account, that it's not just a weekend gig. They're not just doing it for once a year type stuff. These are people that might be doing this all year round, going to many different cons, and as a real business. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of take a look at it in that sense that, this isn't just a, a once a time thing. Um, secondly, I would probably say that the best advice I could give somebody that wants to get into the business like this is to find somebody who's already in it and share a booth with them. Come and see how it's done. For sure, Figure out sure. how to, you know, work the business model with them. You know, go find somebody who who's willing to take you under their wing and, and help share the experience with you. Um, you need your own business license. You need your own product. You need to make sure that you're following all the rules and regulations of the state and how you make your sale. So you got to learn the ropes somehow. So good to find an apprenticeship somewhere, I think, is the best way to put it. Uh, share a table, share some fun, learn some about the business, and, and see if it's the right thing for you. Yeah, that's awesome advice. And, like, um, you know, check out vendors that, that you've seen at conventions before, you know, see if you can get in touch with them, maybe ping them on Twitter and, and, uh, you know, get advice from them on how to start out. Like what's, you know, what kind of merch sells well or, or, um, I mean, cause it differs by convention too. Like, you know, uh, what's good to sell there. Um, so there's a lot of research involved and a lot of veteran vendors, um, kind of know the ropes. So getting in touch with them uh, is, is a good resource as well. Um, Everfree doesn't really have any specific resources on how to help like new vendors. Um, I mean, because as staff, like we're not vendors. So we are not necessarily a good resource like ourselves personally for deciding, yeah, this is this is good. Yeah, it's, you know, I walk around the vendor hall, I buy things, but I don't, you know, no, I know what sells well to me personally. I don't know what sells mm -hmm. well to you know the three thousand under other attendees there too. Yeah, that's a lot I mean, more research than uh, can be done in a short interview. <laughs> 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 but like I, said, like I was saying, if you if you've got a product that's new, that's interesting, that's unique, that's probably what's going to be the seller. You know, you need to have something that's not something they've seen twenty other places and already purchased twenty other times. You know. People don't usually buy items that aren't consumables multiple times over and over, right? They're going right. to buy the unique stuff. They're going to buy the new stuff, the stuff that's that's cool right now. There's only so much wall space and shelf space to be had, unless you're unless you're like what I want to do and get like a portfolio, because it's kind of getting to that point. <laughs> but, uh, better than uh, me, I'm getting all mine laminated so I could just swap out posters on my wall as I see fit. <laughs> <laughs> And some people do that. Some people like that. But, you know, like I say, it's it's been done before. You're probably going to have a tougher time breaking into that business. Right? I will say the, the people who seem to have done really well um, are the ones that can do commissions while they're there. If you're an artist, if I understand if you're like a sculptor or you sell plushies or something like that, you kind of can't. But um, 
some of my favorite things I've seen are things that people actually had drawn up on the spot and I'm walking through the vendor hall and they're picking it up and it's like they're really happy with this. I wouldn't necessarily take that as advice and it, it can be hard to do, if, you know, you're you're mostly a digital artist and don't have access to a printer, but at any rate, rambling. Yeah. Well, um, I've seen people do printings right on site. I've seen, uh, you know, Screw has, has his own uh, sewing machine there doing patches on the spot. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you can do something that makes it interactive with your with your customers, that's probably a plus there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I I've gotten a lot of commissions of my character at the con because I'm just walking around and I'm like, oh, I like that art style, and it's like commissions. It'll be ready by the end of the day, and I'm like, oh, well, look at that. I even had someone like uh, draw me a badge full color and then laminate it there, and then it was ready to hang on my lanyard. So, like, yeah. you know at the end of the day. So that's Customer commissions shirts. at your table is awesome. You people are fancy. They wouldn't let us do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Um, on the subject of just the con as a whole, um, what would you guys say that you've learned since last year? And what are some new changes coming this year that you're excited for? I know we're still kind of early in the planning phase, but it's worth a shot. Um, I am, I am always learning. Um, you know, I've, I've been, I've, you know, staffed like 19 times at conventions since I started volunteering and, and, um, you know, even now, um, I, st I still volunteer at other cons outside Everfree and I, and I fill other positions that I haven't before because I like to learn and know how to do a little bit in each department so that I can always be around to help out. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I've never done AV before, and I did um, some AV at a recent con uh, in Portland in September, and I'd never done AV before, but, you know, now I know a little bit about that. Um, I mean, there's, there's always something to be learned. Like, you know, you may do the same position at every con, but it's always different. Every con runs differently. So, you know, volunteering at more cons is more experience, and, and it's kind of like, compiling everything and learning okay well you know we did it this way and this con did it this way you know mix those together to find the the best way or you know hey you know this is something that another con did that we didn't think of before mm -hmm. and it actually works a lot better than what than what we did so we should probably adopt this method and something i didn't know going into staffing cons was um you don't have to be a professional in the field of whatever relevant position you're trying to get into to perform in that position or in that department rather like uh for security per se you wouldn't need to have been a security officer in real life to be a security at a con it's very different and you get on-site and pre-con training for a lot of stuff and you can kind of learn your way i mean there's a few technical things like technical positions you need to know your stuff presume particularly in av and whatnot but um there's not as much a barrier to to staffing as one would think. Would you say that's uh, would you say that's fair to say? Definitely. Uh, the con staffing is so easy to get into, as long as you're willing to put in the effort to learn the position, to do the work, to be dependable. You know, doing the whole being there on time, being on task, making sure that your your station is manned and and, and your task is being accomplished. That's all that we really ask of people when we're looking for staff members to hire. You know, and Everfree Northwest is a, a not-for-profit, and we do a, an all-volunteer staff. Everybody involved with the con is a volunteer. No one gets paid for any of the work they do. I don't um, get paid. <laughs> yeah, even Tales with con chair doesn't get paid anything. We're not out to make a profit here. We're here to take the money that's brought in through the sales of tickets and autographs and events and whatnot and put it right back into making a great con. Um, so everybody on staff is somebody that has wanted to help out with that cause and we're appreciative of having them um, anybody that's willing to volunteer their time and efforts gets some compensation in the form of the badge and, and t-shirt and, and just the experience to be there and 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 learn and grow along with the rest of the con um, mm -hmm. it's a great thing to put on a resume too for people who are looking to to get something in their early years of, of work experience go work a con it's really easy to get into and you can get the training you need in the position that you're applying for if you 
you know, don't feel comfortable with it already. We do uh, train our, our staff before the con, at the con, during the con. Everything gets taken care of. It's all part of the communication that we have back and forth. Um, so, I mean, like like you said, there are some technical positions that do require some um, prior knowledge of the ex of the uh, environment that you're going to work in. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, just zero entry positions. Just come come sign up, and and we'll let you fill those spots and, and get you some training and, and get you on your way. Yeah, speaking of things that, um, you know, we have open, uh, you know, that the community can get involved with, volunteering. Um, we can always use more volunteers, um, mm -hmm. and you get a, a free shirt that says, you know, Everfree Staff 2016, and you get a, a free badge um, for volunteering. And, um, yeah, I mean, you don't have to have any prior experience. Um, you, have usually, to be 16. you have to be 16 or older. And you're, there are some positions that do, but you're usually not working the entire con unless for some reason your department ends up incredibly short staffed. So <laughs> for the for most positions I've seen, you do get to experience some of the con and hang out with friends. I mean, Circuit and them can attest. I've been doing this for three years. Um, you do have some downtime. You just It's more precious. you got, you got oh, to make yeah. it count. Well, we do only require um, 16 hours over the weekend, and that includes, like, if you come to help set up on Thursday, like, you can take care of a lot of your hours, you know, that day, because, I mean, there's no, there's a lot of work to do, but it's no, there's no events, so, um, a, you know, the 16-hour requirement, you can, I mean, you could do, like, you could do four on Thursday, you could do, like, eight, and then you'd only have, you know, another eight through the whole weekend to do to meet your requirements and that's that's just the minimum so you, you can do more um but that's that's what we require to earn your badge that's a sweet deal i think yeah i think what was it so 16 for you guys yeah yeah i believe at brony con uh worked grade room three years and it's been like i think six hours i mean that's i'm getting nitpicky and not all kinds of the same but that seems pretty at least from what i'm hearing hearing seems to be pretty much the norm kind of that range uh -huh. um yeah because we do want people to enjoy the con we want everyone to like take care of themselves like health wise you know get bathroom breaks and be able to go to whatever events that, that they want to um mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah we want everyone to have a good time staffing and if people are worried about staffing interrupting you know the one thing they came to see at the con they don't want to miss that thing uh you know talk to a supervisor talk to your director you can usually work out those arrangements ahead of time and just say, hey, mm -hmm. I want to go see this particular panel. You know, I don't want to be scheduled during this time. You know, we're willing to work with people and make sure they can enjoy the con as well as staff it too. And, and you know, you get your badge, you can enjoy the con off your shift. Very nice. That's a pretty sweet deal. Have you, um, how has the con grown staff-wise? I think this kind of goes with how has it changed, but um, I'm actually not entirely sure where that question was going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Circuit touched on it, but are there any events happening between now and the convention that potential attendees should know about? Definitely. Um, we're bringing back our writing, our writing contest, um, so that's in the works right now. I mean, we've got tons of announcements coming, you know. Uh, I mean, um, so yeah, the writing contest... Um, uh, I know there's other stuff. We'll, I don't want to having, promise anything. We'll be having uh, panel uh, submissions open up here soon. Oh, well. yeah. Those are happening. Panel submissions. Mm -hmm. Super soon. Mm -hmm. Like, really soon. This this week, probably. Probably this week they'll be open. Hint. Hint. Nudge. And, and just <laughs> as a, as a I'm saying probably. That, probably. We're, we're definitely looking for events that people can suggest that are new that are interesting, that involve, you know, crossover stuff as needed. We, we don't want necessarily just the writer's panel, just the YouTuber's panel. You know, let's let's get some collaboration going out there. Let's see what people can put together when they work together. Yeah, like uh, when KP and, and Josh, you know, riffed the, the first gen movie last year. Yeah. Like that, that's mm -hmm. different. You know, so, I want to see so, the creative stuff out there in, in our community. We have a lot of creative talent, and I want to see how we can put it together and make something even better. 
So you want uh, 20 games of werewolf going on. Is that what I understand? <laughs> 20, 20 werewolf panels. That's your con. <laughs> if, if we do them in fursuits and that we're writing a, a fan fiction about it as we do it, maybe. You right, have to, yeah. When you find out what someone is, they have to throw up green glitter to signify the magic transformation of the changeling. Then they turn into whatever fursuit it was. <laughs> nah, we got to do better than that. We'll do hide the muffin. Just oh, a no. small, little, small little plushy muffin. Hide it somewhere in the con. Tell everybody, go find it and just watch the havoc. <laughs> and just to make Speaking it more hilarious, these... we'll have it right out in the open in the con store or something. Just sitting right there. <laughs> it's hidden, though, guys. It's really well hidden, though. There you like, go. It's really well look. hidden. <laughs> We do, speaking of, of werewolf, though, we do have like twenty five board games for our board gaming room. So um, and counting and, and can counting, yes. And and our gaming rooms for electronic and uh, our, our, our our electronic gaming room is going to be twenty four hours, and Ooh. maybe the board gaming room too. Maybe. Mm. Now, for electronic gaming, is that something where there are stations already set up, or is it? a LAN or like a mix of the two? Uh, I mean, it's going to be huge. So, I mean, we can probably mix the two. Usually we have, um, I mean, last year we had an arcade cabinet with a uh, princess alicorn blast, a fan made game. Um, mm. and then we also always have, uh, my little karaoke and, um, chop mania as well as, uh, retro gaming. We have a lot of, um, locals who bring in their Nintendo 64, super Nintendo, regular Nintendo, um, you know, we bring them and, and whatever games we've got and we, and we just, you just check them out, play whatever you want. So, cause we, you know, Seattle and, um, bronies in general, there's a lot of, um, nerds and geeks and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. and video games are awesome. So it's not, you know, not all the games are pony related, but they're still super fun. And, and awesome. they have it going 24 hours will be yeah, yeah. really fun. Yeah. So is the whole con 24 hours, or is it specific ch sections? Just specific areas. I know um, our electronic gaming room is, and uh, I believe arts and crafts room will be as well, and potentially board gaming room, but I think um, we still need to coordinate more staff for that to happen. Mm. So yeah, we're also looking to make sure that we have programming for people, events and, and things to do at pretty much even the later hours as well. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of cons we've had issues or seen problems with, you know, it's either the, the concert or the bar, and those are your options. Oh. So we want to change that. We want to get better at that and provide enough content for people to choose from that they don't have to just choose between the bar or the concert. How about yeah, have the you... bar at the concert? Well, there'll there'll be plenty of opportunities for both of those, plus a whole lot more. So, well, that works <laughs> <laughs> for the for the parties for the for the people that love the concerts. It'll still be there. Uh, we're also looking at inviting um, other people to have panel events and and gaming rooms events, um, writing events, things that can encompass the entire uh, genre of what we have at the con available, even late night. So, lots of stuff to do. I noticed that um, you guys have been mentioning there's a lot of writer support and writer events there. Is there a particular reason or history behind why there's so much of that? Well, I mean, as far as cons go, I've been to a few of them now, uh, especially pony-related cons. Um, they might have a writing event, uh, but Everfree's been actually one of the only cons, one of the very few cons that has a at-con event, the Iron Author competition that we've done in the past, mm -hmm. where you go, you get a topic, and you write on site and get judged on site and have winners on site, and it's an event that takes place at the con. Um, also, the the pre-writing contest to have winners chosen for that. Um, you know, it, it's it's very uh, unique in that sense that I don't see that happening at many other pony cons. You know. BronyCon is probably the closest thing with their uh, Cools and Sofas room, where they just have basically a writer's lounge where people can hang out and write on their fanfics. Uh, but a very unstructured, nice kickback area. We'll do the same kind of thing, but we'll also have some events happening at the same time that people can mm -hmm. participate in and just open submissions and, and, and let uh, 
you know, the, the community, the community guests, the community uh, organizers help judge those events and, and make sure we highlight the winners and, and give them some recognition for their hard work. So something for everyone, it seems, which is always a sign of a good con. Yeah, I mean, we don't always go to cons just for one thing. We like to make sure that we have some well-rounded activities and, and mm -hmm. that, you know, you just you go to the one panel and you're done. That's not much of a con, right? It's so not worth your 80 bucks. Yeah, we want to make sure there's plenty of stuff to experience, plenty of events going on, um, lots of different aspects of the community to choose from. You know, it's not just VAs. It's not just artists. It's not just musicians. It's everything. There's something for everyone at Everfree. All right. Well, it uh, looks like we've, we've had you here for about 45 minutes, and we didn't want to keep you too much longer than that. So... Um... Uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, throw open our chat room here and see if uh, any of them have any uh, quick questions to ask you. Is that okay? That's great. All right, uh, chat room, uh, go ahead and throw out your questions. And uh, if, uh, if if they are worthy of them, we will go ahead and ask them. <laughs> uh, oh, even and, the unworthy questions, we'll take those too. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. You'd be surprised how unworthy they can get. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you guys answer this one probably 10 times a week on Twitter, but are you guys expanding your con uh, to other areas? That's that's the first one I see, so scrap well, that. I'll, I'll take that question, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I know that a lot of uh, talk has been going on in the community about, you know, are pony cons dying off? Is this, is this going to be the last year for pony? You know, is the season ending? Is the fandom coming to a close? Where is it going from here? And I say, you know, Pony's still going strong. Um, we still have new seasons coming. We have a movie coming. We have another Quester Girls thing coming out. Uh, so it's not the end of Pony by quite a long shot. We've got a couple more years at least to have Pony as a nice uh, focus here. But yes, the community has grown beyond Pony. And, and there's a lot more out there to bring in to the fold, so to speak, in people's interests and, and uh, crossover that we can do. Um, a lot of the VIPs, a lot of the guests that work on the show, a lot of the staff of the show, they don't just do Pony. They do a lot of other shows. They do a lot of other work and a lot of other projects. So uh, one of the jobs in, in bringing these guests to the con is not just to highlight what their Pony experience is, of course, that being our, our base and, and what we, we focus on as being Everfree Northwest this year, uh, but it's also to expand that and, and kind of broaden the horizons of people that we, we highlight as guests and, and show their attendees, you know, what they've done elsewhere or, or highlight some of the work that people know them from outside of Pony. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not just a Pony convention in that sense. It's it's bringing in all sorts of genres. Uh, anime, for for example, is, is quite heavily done in, in Vancouver for the voiceover community. So most of the VIPs that work on, on Pony work on anime dubs as well. Um, they do a lot of theater work as well. They do... Uh, singing and just general um, music. So, I mean, there's a lot of other things to bring in, even with the guests that are specifically brought there for a pony convention, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, and we're looking at branching that out and making sure that we highlight those things. I know uh, conventions that have had panels in the past that have highlighted the anime aspects, the the extracurricular activities of, of the guests, they've been very popular panels and we, we see that interest and we want to bring those kind of events to the forefront and say, hey, not only is this guest yada yada character on Pony, but they also do all these other things that you might not have been aware of and, and let's mm -hmm. show off some of those things too. So it's kind of still taking that Pony Con as a Pony Con, but taking the, the other talents of your, of your primary guests and making something out of it. Yeah, and, and a lot of the show staff, um, we have the mainstays, the main six, the people that have been involved heavily on Pony in major roles, but we also have some, some of the lesser-known characters, some of the bit roles, background Pony type things. They may not, they may just be a, a background Pony on, on My Little Pony, but they might be like a main character on some other show, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're not just bringing them for the Pony, we're bringing them for these other, other shows that they're a part of, other, other fandoms that they bring to our attendee pool. You know, we'd like to bring people to our con that have connections to Pony, but you know, we want to make sure that people are, are seeing them as well outside of their Pony roles. So more of an expansion of what the convention covers, not an uh, expansion in terms of territory, just to 
physical locations. I think that was what they intended on asking, but it turned out to be a great question otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did uh, change venues this year, so <laughs> we did, we're, we're yeah. getting a little um, bit better, bigger hotel. Mm-hmm. Yes. As for like other states, uh, Everfree doesn't really have any plans to expand other states. I mean, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there were 40 My Little Pony conventions, uh, you know, in the world last year. So uh, I think the U.S. might have plenty. Yeah, it seems that we have a very high proportion of conventions to yeah. fan base. So I think, I think they're kind of settling down, though. There haven't been, I don't there's any new ones popping up for 2016 so i think that things are kind of settling down and everyone's kind of um settling in their niche as it were yeah like into their into their location and figuring out what you know times of um, year and venues times of year convention venues yeah Mm. so in in general i mean everfree is a not-for-profit so if we start going out there and franchising this thing right we start putting it in other places i mean it kind of gets away from the local aspects of having that um, not-for-profit status going on we're not out to make a profit we're not out to you know expand into multiple territories and and take over the pony cons or anything like that so you know we're we're focused in seattle right now um, and that's that's pretty much where it looks like we're staying Mm -hmm. plus i'm pretty sure you'd be about ready to rip off your shirt and go screaming down the street after a while of trying to do two major conventions at once across the country yeah it does it does get a lot of involvement in putting on a con so it's not it's not an easy thing being in management for a con is great being in management for multiple cons especially especially when it's volunteer work i mean we don't yeah. get paid so i mean we want to put on the best con we can and that that takes place at Everfree Northwest Seattle. Mm, there you go. All right. uh, uh, couple, yeah, we did have a couple of good questions here. Um, one of them was, uh, who was your uh, more? Uh, who was some of the more interesting cast members that you've uh, spoken with? Uh, when, um, I guess it's one more more of a thorn wing, but Tails <laughs> can answer as well. Interesting guest stories, huh? Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. Um. This is where we study our NDAs very hard. Either <laughs> <laughs> that or we throw caution to the wind and hope nobody pays attention to this. You know, I, I, I think I'll just I'll answer this in general um, because I think it's a, it's a good question. Uh, all of the guests are very unique because they are people. And I think people forget that point a lot in interacting with them as they feel like there's some deity or person to be revered or, or just some larger than life character before them. Right. Um, you know, they're celebrities, they're VIPs, they're, they're important people, but at the end of the day, they are people. And, and that's, that's something that we need to remember. You know, they like the same things we like. They, they do the same things we do. Uh, I know, a guest was recently asked at a convention, you know, what do you do when you're not like working on the show or working on movies or doing it's like uh, laundry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's a it's a valid thing that mm-hmm. people sometimes forget that the VIPs are people too. Um, and they like to have fun, they like to hang out with their friends, they like to do the same sorts of things we like to do, and that's great. Um, you know, I have I have my own personal stories with interactions with VIPs that I probably won't necessarily share because they're they're personal and I have my fun and, and people all have their own kinds of fun with with their friends and whatnot. Um, but yeah, just in general, the VIPs love to have fun. <laughs> they're great folks. I think one of the best things you can do is someone who um, kind of has that mindset you were talking about is to just follow some of your favorite ones on Twitter. I mean, a lot of people already do, but I, I've seen a lot of the talent from the show. Um, we just talk about the daily stuff that goes on on Twitter, and it kind of does help to bring them down to, to earth a bit. And, um, as, as particularly as guest relations or VIP relations staffers, you kind of get to see a bit more of that. But yeah, I mean, they have yeah. they have families, they have kids too. It's it's. I think it's probably the funnest thing to see some of their interactions with their own kids, you know, mm-hmm. and and watching how their kids react to their role on the show that they're watching on TV, right? 
Right. It's like, oh, that that's mommy's voice, right? That, that, that gets me to just say, you know, the personal aspects of their lives versus what they do for a living being so out in the public eye. It, it's, it's somewhat uh, interesting to see. Hmm. Right. Um, yeah. Go, go ahead. Um, yeah, a lot of the... Uh, um, a lot of the, you know, show talent is very interactive on Twitter. So if you've got like a favorite pony character, like find their Twitter, follow them, you know, talk with them because they're usually, most of them are, are pretty open and then they'll, you know, chat with fans and stuff. Cause, um, I mean, they're, they're all like very real They're I mean, they're people and that's pretty much it, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean. I they, think, they love the show just like we do. I mean, it's probably not to the yeah. extreme that a lot of us do, but they do enjoy the show. They enjoy the uh, community artwork and just content that's created, the music, the the art, the the just everything that, that the fans put together is amazing. Um, some of it they can't participate in, like the writers aren't supposed to be reading the fan fiction stuff, just conflict of interest there. Um, but all in all, they do enjoy the stuff that we produce, and, and they're very appreciative of of the work that we do to honor them in their job, right? You know, if, if you take it personally, it's like if, if someone were to come up, up come up to you and just praise you for the lovely job you do down at your own local office deal, you know, it, it's the kind of, same kind of thing. It's like this is weird in a sense that, you know, they're doing their job, but yet they have all these adoring fans that just love them for what they put together as far as the show goes. Hmm. True. All right, uh, here's a fun little um, odd question. Uh, have there been any panels that were submitted to you or that you had to reject um, due to just oddness or... Yes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's a quick answer, yes. Uh, there's plenty of panels. Yeah. Well, I mean, not to get into details on them, but, mm. you know, there are, there are panel submissions that are not appropriate, right? Right. Uh, we have a PG-rated con. Uh, and we need to stick to that during, you know, daytime hours t specifically. Um, and, and there's just things that would go beyond that, of course. So right off the bat, that eliminates those kind of things. Uh, we are opening up some of our, uh, or relaxing some of our restrictions in certain areas, mostly late at night, uh, to expand those options, so to speak. Uh -huh. uh, but we still want to keep it tasteful. We want to keep it in keeping with what the show is all about, right? Uh, the show is about friendship. The show is about, you know, being a good person. Um, so things that help build up and, and uplift the people around you is, is you know, kind of what we're going to be picking from. You know, we can have some good fun. We can have some good nature fun. We can have some adult fun. And, and that's all good and great. Um, but there are limits to that, of course. Mm. All right. Um, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot more questions here. Most of them were just, um, why don't you do a con here? Why don't you do a con there? And we already addressed that. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go with the uh, final question that we always uh, have to bring up at the end of every interview. If you had a choice, would you go with cupcakes or muffins? And we'll start with Tails. Cupcakes. And Thorn? Definitely cupcakes. Come on. All right. Cupcakes. <laughs> cupcakes are just frosted muffins. Ah. Yeah, oh, there you go. He's, he's got you get it two, right. He's you get got two and one. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, uh, we, we've taken up a, a, a lot of your time here, and thank you very much for the awesome interview. Uh, uh, do you have any quick final shout outs or um, little uh, blurbs you want to get out there before we let you go here? We'd love to see you at Everfree. Come and help staff if you uh -huh. feel you want to come staff, or just come and attend and enjoy the convention with the rest of us. Hmm. Yep. This is Everfree Northwest's fifth year, so it's going to be our biggest and best event. So it's not a con that you want to miss. Oh, we've got anniversary. All... Oh, wow. Yeah, we have It is our cons. fifth anniversary. We have so much stuff planned. Uh, oh, we'll leave you like... with a little teaser. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Okay. I think I think we've only announced half of our guest list, so. Yeah, yeah. And we've got else? a lot more guests to come. So keep an eye on the Twitter. Keep an eye on the Facebook. Keep an eye on our webpage. We've got a lot more to come, so don't miss it. This is a good year to go to cons. I think a lot of you are turning five this year, in fact. Uh, I think it might just be BronyCon and Everfree. 
Uh, to my knowledge, um, Babs kind of, I think, uh, was introduced a year later, and most of them are either in the third or fourth years, except for yeah. the only one, uh, only a few uh, exceptions on those being maybe two or one. Yeah, not not quite. I think it's just us and BronyCon having both of our fifth years. So. Yeah. Go to both. It's fifth anniversaries. Go, go to both. Yeah. yeah, fifth anniversary is definitely nothing to shy about. <laughs> All right, uh, well, we'll go ahead and let you go then. Thank you so much for the wonderful interview. It's always great to hear from you guys and all the great things that you have planned for Everfree Northwest every single year and gets me all excited and hoping that I can get the money to go <laughs> every single year too. I'm definitely going to have to make extra effort since fifth year anniversary. That is not something that can be missed easily. Mm-hmm. Oh, we've got some good hotel deals on the website. Make sure to get your room booked early and oh, yeah. we'll Ooh, please yeah. see you guys. Love to have you. All right. And well, let's go ahead and let them go. And we'll get back to our uh, discussion group here and get on to the new episode. And thank you very much again for joining us here, Tails and Thornwing. Thanks Thanks for having us. Have a good night. Mm, Good night. All right. And we're going to go ahead and get our group call up here real fast. Uh, see here and uh, of course we've got suki well coming back here we deal jared and we're missing blinked which we need blinked right now because there's one Cody. quick thing we want to do here uh get on the call we can show you the thing okay so yeah we are going to get into the uh new episode here but just before we do because we are expecting one more person here and he's we actually ran a little bit longer on the interview than i expected so uh, while the interview was going on, we received a package in the mail, and this actually came from Vaguely Creepy, who's been planning on sending us, uh, me and uh, Blink both a package. So, uh, Blink, at this time, go ahead and open it up. Why, Why is the comics in here? Why is the post office delivering at 10 o'clock at night? It's it UPS. UPS. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, it took it from Walmart. It's fucking Walmart. They have plenty of these. <laughs> Big box starter too. That's what they're made for. Yep. Look at all those peanuts. All the peanuts. Oh, I think vaguely packed this himself too. I wouldn't be doubt. Da- I wouldn't doubt that at all. It works in the UPS store after hey, all. Can I, can I eat some peanuts? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know what? I sh- maybe I should have picked up from where I left off earlier. You guys too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're terrible, man. I love it. <laughs> oh, jeez. This thing's in there. Like, it's really in there. Like, I don't want to make a fucking mess. Just... Actually, yeah, we, just... we got a vacuum, so don't worry too much about it. Actually, I didn't switch over in time to hear it. Where did it cut off? Uh, I, you pretty much got it right off the bat there. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, they, they actually... Um, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the people there, I uh, just completely tails. Yeah, tails was nice enough to actually put a list of MLP conventions. Oh man, this thing is oh jeez, it's uh unless it goes by several years at a time, it's over a hundred l- names long. There's yeah. got to be some extra. T- there's got to be some duplicates in here. Is there or am I? Are they all cons or are they meetups? Something. They're all, they're all cons. Fiesta Equestria, My Little Pony Fair, Grand Bro- Brony Gala, Trothalom, Trotcon, Crystal Mountain. Oh, hey, there's my hometown one. Great British Brony, My Little Con West. Oh, wow. This, Jesus this is crazy. Christ, vaguely. Jeez, dude. I love this. There you go, Cody. So, so there's a Cody half and a... I got, he, he sent me a letter. Is there anything else in, that... in there? Okay, good. Give me the box cutters again. Oh, <laughs> hey, these aren't... They're not all individual cons. This is per year. Okay, so this is per year. I'm not completely losing my mind here. Okay, oh yeah, I now I see it now. 2016, that's 22. 2015, 42. 2014, 39. Okay, I thought I was losing my mind there. How are there so many cons? Okay. So 2015 was the biggest year so far. So we've actually had more cons than than Never not. before. Yeah, it's oh, actually yeah. been expanding. Gosh. I'll take it to Josh before I go to bed. Yay. So, um, what did you get? I'm looking right now. Alright. Of course, we're doing this just to one stall for time, and, uh... Yep. Yeah, Brody Con with 10,011. Jesus Christ, vaguely. <laughs> Definitely as good at his job. Yep. 
He made a wise crack about being called a packing guru. I think he's actually correct. He was not cracking wise. There was more truth than he could ever know. Guy who works for UPS, you think he, you think he's stuck at the job? <laughs> works for UPS? Yes. Oh, really? I think he did the packing job himself. I believe he said. Nice. A little gentle cut here. I need to pop. I need to pop bubble wrap. Oh no. It's popping bubble wrap, people. All right, he's trying. He, he's trying. All right, we're gonna look at the card first. I don't know what's in this. If this box is even anything, I think this box is nothing. I don't think this box is anything. It's just there to be space. Well, I'll open it just fine. Well, give me a second. You don't need a box cutter for that. I think it's just there as a space holder. Probably it was, but we'll find out. About to find out. It's cut away from me instead of toward me. Yeah, I was gonna say that's not how you hold use a box cutter. People want to know, man. Come on. Oh, it's a birthday card is one thing. I don't know if there's any, actually anything in the box. No, there's got to be more in there, I think. We're about to find out, Josh. Okay. <laughs> I like this little birthday bird you gave me. Hope it's a good. Hope it's a great one, Cody. All my best and wishes, and then some. <laughs> Excuse me, vague, vaguely creepy. My apologies. Somebody bleep that out there and edit. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize when I read a card I read about. Thanks for the card, buddy. I don't think the box is anything. It might be something. Can I find out? Yep. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just there. What? Oh, this son of a bitch. <laughs> there it is. It's a hey, little uh, pose. Circuit, are you supposed to have this on the webcam? Because it's not. No, it's pre or audio. This okay. is basically this is an artist tool that an artist can use these to make poses for. Oh, cool. Sounds yeah, um, we'll probably actually uh, try putting a picture of it in there somewhere or something like that. I'll put it down there. Yeah, okay. 